Hello to everyone. Make sure everyone's all right. Uh, there's going to be a few things I'm just going to discuss and I'll get on to the lesson. Firstly, I'm going to um, scroll over to the Teams group. And if you can see, um, our actual meeting is in the lesson for what the lesson's going to be, if that makes sense. Unfortunately, we still got some people jumping into WHS management plan too, so you're jumping into the wrong meeting. That's okay. It's not an issue. It's something that normally happens just because it's a new system and everyone's just getting used to it. So if there's a teacher out there, could they please just jump in and kick out those students and tell them to come to the right meeting? Most of you are here, as you can see, there's about 170 of you, which is uh, about normal. Okay. Um, I've got uh, Gary Pemberton, uh, you could possibly see his name, he hasn't got his webcam on, but um, he is a building design guru teacher, but he's been jumped on board with us just because of our numbers are so large, so please welcome Gary, I might try and get him to get his webcam on on Thursday. Uh, for those within the Wollongong area, Please, um, if I'm not getting back to you in time, please send your message to Gary. If you could, Gary, do you mind putting your email in the chat box just so the students uh, know who to talk to? Or better still, I'd prefer if you could possibly um, just message him through Teams. It seems to be quicker and we can track it as well. It's just easy for us. All right. Uh, hoping we got all the other sections there. Um, I'm just going to open it up to the floor for a quick minute and say good day to everyone if he's uh, online. So I'm going to allow the attendees to unmute. So I'm guessing I don't, I haven't, I can't really see all the webcams. Johnny, you guys at Miller are there. I oh, know I've seen Trev. Frank, I've seen. Hello, Frank. Hey, guys at Griffith. Uh, Maria and Nara. Just jump in and just say good day at any time if you want, boys and girls. Uh, Wagga, hello, Graham. I'm, I'm guessing you guys are there. Aubrey, and then all of our friends out at Dubbo, Bathurst, Armadale, on Orange. I hope I haven't missed anyone. I'm, I'm pretty sure I said Millie. Yeah, I did at the start. So, so welcome everyone. If, if you can just jump in and just quickly say good day, just so I know you're there. I'm, I don't seem to have the webcams activated at the moment, but anyway. Oh, there we go. I can do the large gallery. Just give us a moment. Oh, there we go. Okay, I've got it. Brilliant. Hey, guys, how's everyone going? There's Aubrey. There's yeah, Frank. Got to to Dubbo, oh, hey, guys. Hey, hey, guys at Dubbo. How are you all going? So, welcome. It's been a bit of a, a good week with regards to getting this going. Um, we've got some issues, though. I'll just um, – I'm going to confirm because of the numbers – of 200, we haven't been able to allow any more in. What we're going to do is we're going to just make an announcement on Thursday on our next step to make sure everyone's in and we don't fall behind in any instance. For those in the interim that can't get access, just message Gary. Uh, and if you haven't got your assessment, just get cracking on that. And then we're going to sort this out as of Thursday. It's mainly uh, for Wollongong area. Uh, just because our numbers are so big. There are still other students in, in certain locations I can't get in, but look, we're going to sort it out before we get into the next cluster, all right? So please don't stress about it, um, but we will definitely have something. We have something sort of we're going to make an announcement on um, on Thursday, okay? So please put your mind at ease, but if you want to get cracking with some of that work, uh, send us a message and we'll forward the uh, WHS management plan and that task two activity to be complete within, you know, what is it, 10, 12 days or something. All righty. I'll just um, open up. Has anyone got any questions? Anyone want to jump in before I start the lesson? You can even put a comment in the chat box. Yes. So Happy birthday to Travis. There you go. All right. Um, okay, so I'm going to now, I'll get started with this. I'm going to um, do all the participants just so we can get a wriggle on with this delivery and then get everyone to go off into their breakout rooms. So
All right, I'm going to get started. WHS 03 Hazards and Risks. I had, um, geez, sorry, I think it might have been Matt. Apologies, I can't recall your last name. Maybe, yeah, it was. Uh, said that I was going to talk about managed safety, and I did say that last week, and I haven't actually gone through it. So I have actually had a good look, and some of, some of these answers are fantastic, to be honest, especially for the first couple of nights. So kudos to you, boys and girls, or should I say... Daniel, ladies and gents, um, you are a principal contractor and have started a construction project over $250,000. How will you efficiently manage safety on site? And the question is, uh, approximate one paragraph will suffice. And just please ensure this is written in your own words. So just for you to have a bit of a think about it. Firstly, before undertaking the project, this is one student, I'm not going to name who it is, I will establish a time plan on how we will undertake the project efficiently and safely after discussions with my employees as well as other relevant tradesmen. This could be done in the form of a Gantt chart or something similar, which we'll be doing later on in the year. Once that plan is established, I will review how the relevant tasks are to be done safely. Once that is done, I will create a WHS management plan as well as relevant safety documents such as the SWIMS. Finally, once all relevant documents are created, I will hold toolbox talks at the start of the projects as well as updates or updates when needed. So that's a fantastic answer. Alrighty. So I hope that sort of gets you a bit of an understanding of what we're sort of hoping to get and make you think in yourself as a, a possible future builder. All right, so tonight I'm going to focus on uh, risk assessments, hazard identification, understanding the hierarchy of controls and completing a risk assessment. We're probably going to go for about one and a half hours to two. Um, and then we're going to go on to one activity tonight, which is a self-marking activity, and then uh, completing your risk assessment. Uh, I'm going to have an example and then also thinking about filling out the rest of your WHS management plan and I'm going to discuss that right at the end. Uh, but first, I wanted just to have a bit of a think of um, the repercussions if, if we're not using a management plan and if we're not abiding by it as a builder. So from SafeWork New South Wales, Improvement, prohibition, and penalty notices. So I just thought I'd just bring this up just to make you think about what could possibly happen if you're not abiding by legislation or by the laws. At Safe Work, under some circumstances, issue improvement notices or prohibition notices when there is a contravention of the WHS laws or of the workers' compensation legislation. They may also issue a penalty notice for some offences rather than prosecuting through the courts. Improvement notices, so here's one example. We can issue an improvement notice when there is a safety issue that needs to be fixed or if workers' compensation requirements are not being met. The workplace can generally continue operating while the improvement notice is being actioned. However, the notice will require the issue to be fixed within a specified time. In appropriate circumstances, improvement notices will correct unsafe work practices very quickly. I'll just get through this as best I can. An improvement notice, maybe as an example, require a business to fix a slip hazard or to train the workers in the safe use of plant equipment. Prohibition notices, that an activity, if they believe or safe work believe that an activity at work involves a more serious risk to health and safety, then they can issue a prohibition notice. It may include directions to stop the activity or to change the way the activity is done. For example, if scaffolding is not safe to be used, they will issue a prohibition notice to stop work immediately on or around the scaffolding until the issue is fixed. Finally, the penalty notices may be issued for certain serious offences, for example, removing asbestos without a licence. Okay. Uh, I won't go through the rest of it, but I think you've got a real understanding of how in-depth this can be and how serious uh, it could be if you're not abiding by legislation. So it's probably something you don't want to really risk. You want to slowly get yourself set up as a builder um, and making sure you're doing it right. 
All right, I'm going to move on to the lesson. So, does anyone understand what the term, what is a hazard? A hazard is anything in the workplace that has the potential to harm people. They can include objects in the workplace, such as mas machinery or dangerous chemicals. Other hazards relate to the way work is done. All right, I want you to think about this. So, um, what is a risk in comparison to what is a hazard? It's actually a difference. It's a, a risk is a situation involving exposure to danger. So there is a slight difference, and sometimes it can be confusing. Just think about this again. A hazard is anything in the workplace that has the potential to harm people. A risk is a situation involving exposure to danger. And this video, sometimes I even get myself confused with it. I've been teaching it for years. Really explains the two differences. All right. So, Trev, do you mind giving us a thumbs up? What's the difference between a hazard and a risk? Easy question? Apparently not. There appears to be some confusion between the two. A hazard can be identified as anything which can cause harm. A risk is the potential that a hazard will cause harm. This ladder is a hazard. Climbing the ladder and falling off is a risk. This plane is a hazard. Flying the plane in a thunderstorm and crashing is a risk. This hammer is a hazard. Using it and injuring oneself is a risk. Okay, so now we understand the difference between a hazard and a risk. How then do we assess the specific risk that a hazard poses? First, we assess how likely it is that someone will be exposed to the hazard. The likelihood will depend upon the probability and the frequency of exposure to a hazard. We also assess the likely outcome, the severity or range of the potential consequences resulting from the hazard. An example, the hazard in this case is our poisonous black spider contained in a closed jar. Rating the hazard, the spider, against the severity and probability scale, we'd most likely say the risk of harm to the person is minor and remote. Change the circumstances and the poisonous spider is outside the jar, we change the risk rating to probable and imminent danger. See you next time. I really like that video. I know I've probably been showing it for the last three or four years, but it really puts it into context about how to understand or, or get to understand the difference between a hazard and a risk. Can you see the snapshot I've taken here? It's called the hazard categories. It's actually from the old subby pack. They don't use this anymore, but I've, I've liked it so much. So I've taken the snapshot and I've kept it. And the reason for that is because you can sort of categorise hazards and you can see for WHS issues, it's not, uh, sorry, it's not the actual doing the thing, it's the actual object itself. So you can put the hazards in a category. Okay. So for example, and one of the best is uh, for, or heights and falls. So that's the hazard. But the risk is, you know, someone on a scaffold with no handrail 
that's the risk of them that they're going to fall. All right, and then that's where you have these different categories of risks. That's where it really helps to make you have a bit of an understanding of the hazard, and then from that you go, well, what's the risk of that person falling off? All right, risk assessments. What's a risk assessment, you might say? It's a systematic process of evaluating the potential risks that may be involved in a projected activity or undertaking. If you go to your housing industry site safety pack, uh, the next documents after we've completed one, two, and three, then I believe you have the consultation and communication. It discusses risk management, right? And I'll just take a snapshot. It goes into the explanation, as we just discussed, for hazards versus, versus risks. And then it goes into the risk management process. So I'm just going to read this part out. WHS laws require anyone in control of a workplace or a workplace activity to identify any potential hazards, assess the risks associated with those hazards, and if necessary, implement control measures to eliminate or minimise the risks. Yeah? All persons must have an understanding of the four-step risk management process. You can check that now on your, on your own time, figure one. We'll bring that up in a moment. Incorporate the steps into all work activities. If any persons are concerned with the control measures used in a workplace activity, they should bring this to the attention of their direct manager. So that's what you boys and girls need to do as a builder or PCBU. I've just highlighted those important uh, notes. Potential hazards, identify potential hazards, assess the risks, and then implement control measures to eliminate or minimise the risk. Now, you're going to be doing a risk assessment tonight. It's also something that you're going to be doing for your uh, inspection report is implementing control measures. For example, nice and simply, there's a risk of, there's a fall hazard. There's a risk of someone falling off because there's no edge protection. You're going to implement a control measure to make sure that, that those workers don't fall off. Yeah? So what I want you to do is, uh, I'll probably continue just so to get this lesson going, is research yourself right now if you wish and define implementing control measures. Some of you may already know that. But just have a good think about a control measure. So do a quick research now. Remember, Google's your friend. and like, we, we sort of promote it because there's so much out there to learn. The information time is, 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 is helpful if you're um, on site and using your phone or using your tablet. So I'll be more than happy to see someone throw in, even in their own words, a definition in the chat box of a control measure. Golden Star for Nicholas. Actions that can be taken to reduce the potential of exposure to the hazard or the control measure could be to remove the hazard or to reduce the likelihood all over it. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to put in actions to prevent, eliminate or reduce the recurrence of a hazard. You've identified what, what the, to implement your control measures, you're going to Identify the risk and have scheduled or coordinated systems to minimise hard harm to any workers. That note from the um, managing safe, safety at the start is pretty much what you'll need to do as a builder uh, when running jobs. So you're going to be coordinating stuff. You're going to be planning and scheduling, and you're going to be incorporating safety with it. Make the job run better, and you'll have actual better staff. All right, so how do you assess the risk on site? Has anyone ever heard of the term hierarchy of controls? 
Did anyone want to jump in the chat box and uh, maybe maybe this time just give a definition in their own words? Does anyone know the hierarchy of controls? Jack Flood, beautiful. All right, I've just got a quick Wikipedia definition. Hierarchy of hazard controls is a system used in the industry to minimize or eliminate exposure to hazards. It is a widely accepted system promoted by numerous safety organizations. This concept is taught to managers in industry to be promoted as standard practice in the workplace. Various illustrations are used to depict this system most commonly as a triangle, as you can see on the right-hand side. That one's probably getting a little bit outdated as per Safe Work New South Wales. But just if you have a bit of a good understanding, it starts from elimination, substitution, engineering controls, admin, and PPE. And we'll go through that in a bit more in a moment. All right. Uh, there is a link to the safety toolkit and I'll actually I'll, I'll grab that or if one of the teachers can grab that from safe work I should have put that up before that shows you how to use the right controls to eliminate or minimize risks and protect your workers so everyone's always probably thought the first uh, control measure would be to use PPE do you think Quite often, everyone goes, oh, what do we use as a control measure? And everyone's first thought is PPE. Let's wear goggles. Let's wear headgear. Let's wear boots. That's actually the, um, the last control measure. We, we actually, at the top, our first one would be, yeah, it's the last option, Angus. Our first one would be to actually completely eliminate the hazard. So elimination, it says remove the hazard completely. Eliminating the hazard is the most effective way to manage risks. So if you don't have to do it, don't do it, and you're not going to get hurt, are you? But let's think about, I've, I've got a video I've got, and I've got another good little um, cartoon, but where it is not practice, practical to eliminate a hazard, the risk must be minimized. So we can use one or more of the following. So engineering option, we can change the design. And I'm going to give you a couple of really good examples. We can substitute the hazard so we can replace the hazard with something else. We can isolate it, which is separate the hazard from people. To minimize any remaining risk by using admin control. So we can use administration, geez, I can't talk, administration method, health and safety procedures and policies by, you know, safe work procedures and staff training, which improves the safety on site. And if the risks still remain, the possible impact on people must be controlled using PPE, which is personal protective equipment. I'm hoping you all understand that. Safety glasses, hard hats. Protective closing is the least effective way to manage the risks. And Trevor's all over it. He's just put the link in the chat box for you to have a look. All right, I've got a couple of good videos. Uh, I'm actually going to show two of you. One of them is a good little uh, cartoon, and the other one's um, an old one, which I've done. But it's just an example. I thought I'm going to use both of them just to get you to have a bit of a feel for it. The Hierarchy of Controls The level of risk associated with an event can be established by assessing the chance of the event happening, likelihood, and the potential harm or damage the event could cause, consequences. Plan and implement controls to eliminate or reduce risks before you proceed with your task. 
Some types of controls are more effective than others. Use the hierarchy of controls to choose the best method. Eliminating the hazard. Physically removing it is the most effective hazard control. Substitution. The second most effective hazard control involves replacing something that produces a hazard, similar to elimination, with something that does not produce a hazard. The third most effective means of controlling hazards is engineered controls. These do not eliminate hazards, but rather isolate people from hazards. Administrative controls are changes to the way people work. Examples of administrative controls include procedure changes, employment training and installation of signs and warning labels such as those in the hazardous chemical information system. Personal Protective Equipment PPE, is the last line of defence. It acts as a barrier to limit your exposure to hazards. PPE must be used to supplement higher levels of control. As you go about your work, continue to monitor the effectiveness of those controls and look for any changes to the task or work area. For more safety and training solutions, visit pertrain.com.au. All right, Johnny gave me that video. It's a really good example, actually. I really like it. This one's probably a little bit older. This is the one that we videoed a few years ago. I still want to use it because it's actually using cutting a piece of timber. So most of us are carpenters, or even if you aren't, you have a bit of an understanding how that works in the construction industry. So bear with us with this video. But anyway, I, I still do like it, even though it's a little bit old. Oh, rookie error. Thanks, Greg. All right, we're going to have a quick discussion on hierarchy of controls for a PCBU or a builder within the construction industry. Okay. So we have these one, two, three, four, five, six items, which are different categories, have just been changed. And we're going to start from the top, which is the highest, the best way of stopping someone from hurting themselves, whether, whatever the hazard is, to the least. All right. So number one, we'll start with elimination. Now, I'm going to explain this as an example with Joe. I love this picture, don't you? Joe the carpenter, and he needs to cut a piece of timber, say a stud going on the wall. Okay, the hazards involved in that are going to be, I'll just name a few, uh, use of power tools or machinery. We have electrical hazard. Uh, we have dust and some noise hazards, pretty much. Might be some metal handling, but we'll, we'll worry about those another time. What we need to do is you need to cut this timber, okay? Now, the top of the hierarchy of controls, the best way of him avoiding himself getting hurt would be just to eliminate that completely. But we can't. We need to put that timber in. So we'll go to the next hierarchy of controls, which is in the part two. Firstly, can we substitute it? And substitute, for example, would be uh, with the electrical hazard. We may say, instead of using a power saw, Joe is going to cut it by hand saw. Okay? So we're going to substitute it, the method. That might not be any good. The reason why is because we need to get the circular saw and get it done quickly so we can uh, you know, make money. So we might isolate it, which would be putting in barricades and just isolating it to that one area, isolate from the dust and the noise. So it's only affecting one person rather than everyone on site. That makes sense. There's another method. We could use engineering controls, so we could change it and have engineering controls where um, you could take it out to a factory and get the machine cut. So the timber could be machine cut, so a CNC machine or something similar. But that's probably going to be too expensive for this instance. Okay, so maybe not use that. So our last portal call, which is in the administration part three and the personal protective equipment, we can use administration by ensuring that Joe, it's got longer, longer legs this time, 
Ensuring Joe has been trained as a competent operator, so we know that he can actually use that, that machinery or that power tool properly. Uh, and he's also been trained in the safety aspect on that side of doing that job. Make sense? Yep. And then lastly, when he does use it, he will have to wear personal protective equipment. If we can't use any of these items, we're going to be putting on hard hats, we're going to be wearing goggles. <laughs> Very good goggles. Nice. We're going to be wearing earmuffs, possibly, and actually, we're going to be wearing boots. So hopefully that makes sense as an example. Right, uh, is that audio back on? Yep. All right, um, I, I, I played both videos just because I... Um, even though my drawing is probably really, really ordinary, it sort of really gets the message across about how to do it. Now, look, as a builder, you're not going to be stopping and doing the hierarchy of controls. You will probably do that uh, naturally. You won't be able to eliminate most hazards on a construction site, so you're going to be trying to substitute or you're going to minimise the risk is what you're going to be doing all the time. All right, boys and girls? All right, so we also have code of practice on how to manage work health and safety risks. I'm just going to increase the size of this a little bit. Uh, I've actually put that in the folders. I'll just throw that over. Tab of tonight's lesson. So if you go to WHO3 hazards and risks, if you go to files, that's where I'm starting to put more stuff. You can access and download that and put that into your files. All right, boys and girls? Brilliant. Or should I say ladies and gents? Sorry, Daniel. Okay, so a code of practice. I know you're not going to be looking at all of them when you start working as a builder, but at least you have a good understanding of where you can access this stuff. You may even, you know, we next week we give you workplace facilities. You may even want to get a have a look at that because you're working on site and there should be an ablution block or there should be some water. You might not even be getting that on your site, but there is all codes of practice for it and it's just a recommendation on what should be used on site. I'm going to scroll down to the contents page and just make you have a bit of an understanding of how similar these um codes of practices are with relation to following uh, the laws. So it will go into your duties when you should uh, do a risk management or when it should be approached. But then I'll just highlight this again. You can see how it will go in and it will explain how to identify your hazards. And this is really the steps that you need to do or need to follow. How to assess your risks then how to control them. And then actually at the end, you are required to actually review your controls and check that you're doing them right or if you've got some room for improvement. Alrighty. Are there any questions with that so far? Anyone want to put something in the chat box? All right, I'll continue. So in Safe Work New South Wales uh, website, and in their risk management and how they manage um, sites safely, there's a four-step process. Step one, how to identify your hazards. Step two, how to assess the risks. Step three, how to control your risks. And then finally, step four, how to review controls. And that's what's required to do on site at all times. So remember, identify, assess, control, and review. Bear with me. I know this is a, um, a dry topic. I've actually, um, I might put this up later. There was a risk calculator. I can't recall who gave us that. Was that you, Johnny, or um, one of the other teachers? And what it actually do, it does is it works out the probability, you know, it's probably not going to happen to somewhere that's almost certain, and then it um, fluctuates and changes your exposure to your risk, so whether it's going to be very rare or continuous. 
and then your consequences are going to be something like first aid treatment or there could be you know numerous fatalities it could be catastrophic what I might do is I'll just quickly open it up I'll just quickly show you boys and girls No, I lost it. I'll do that after, okay? Apologies for that. All right. What I want you to do is I want you to have a look at your housing industry site safety pack. I want you to go, I believe it's Form 4, and open that up right now. And we're going to work with this together. What I want you to do is to think of your project or your job. And what I'll do is open up. The project that you can use if you don't have one. And I want you just to stop and think about the circumstances, okay? So if you go to your general tab, go to files, you can see I've uploaded yesterday the Mr. and Mrs. Brown drawings. I'm going to click on that. So you've been given a contract, you're going to start the job, you need to develop a WHS management plan. So firstly, after you've confirmed who the workers are and that you're going to sign off your policy, I want you to stop and think about your risk assessment. So you're going to go into the property. Obviously, this hasn't been built yet. It's a vacant block of land. Uh, the street, I believe, is on this side. Correct me if I'm wrong. And there's no other houses around it. All right? It is a three-by, two-bedroom house off memory. Standard structure. Kitchen, family room, hallway, single story, so that's something to consider. Brick veneer. Concrete roof tiles. Okay. So once you've got it, what you're going to do is you're going to measure this job, price it, win the tender, win the quote, and then you're going to start construction. You need to have your WHS management plan complete. Now, you don't have to use this one for your instance. If you are um, running a job yourself or you're on a project that you can relate to, you can write that one down. All righty? If you don't, uh, please use this instance. And this is going to be a, um, a single-story single dwelling, a new build, and with vacant plots of land around it. Alrighty. So stop and think about now the risk assessment. I have put up an example of how you can complete this. So I'm thinking about building something at TAFE. See our address there. Just made up a bit of a silly name. The scope of works is our structure. The start date is like that was a few years ago. The time to complete four months, I've signed it off. If you have identified any of the listed or other potential hazards on the site, you will need to enter a suitable control below to show how you have controlled the hazards. If any further hazards are introduced, record them and update the table at the bottom of this page. If you identify any high-risk construction where you require a safe work method statement, and we're going to be doing Form 5 on um, Thursday. Let's have a look. Um, I'm going to highlight these parts, and apologies for not having it bigger. Items to consider. So let's have a think about this. So can parking arrangements at the site cause incidents and injuries to any person? That's oh, My thoughts are that's highly unlikely. We have designated spots available with appropriate signage. Are there any slip? 
trips and falls impacting on the safe access or egress? I'm going to say, yes, we just need to ensure that the road is tidy up. Are there any other trades or activities that may impact on my work safety? No, I don't think there are. Have I communicated with other trades, workers in this area, upon contract signage, all will be inducted? We talk about induction next week. Are there any amenities for the site? Can the use of amenities affect workers' health due to poor maintenance? So there's no, no all amenities are tidied on a regular basis. So you've got a labourer employed. I've already allowed for that in the price. Is there a risk of injury due to fall zones and penetrations not being protected? <coughs> Excuse me, everyone. Uh, for example, stair voids, roof areas and balconies. So nil at the moment, although it'll be constantly monitored. Can something fall on me or can I use something to fall onto someone else? So toilet balls installed where appropriate when required. Is there a risk of workers or pedestrians being hit by moving plant and or motor vehicles? So yes, there is. Um, so I'm going to say we're going to have this SWMS written and all personnel inducted into moving plant on site. Is there a risk of injury due to impaling hazards not being appropriately protected in the work area? So I'm going to say, like, for example, star pickets, Rio bars, stack pallet, stack. I'm going to say nil, but all areas monitored. Is there a risk of injury due to open trenches or excavation? So I'm going to say nil, or trenches filled in at the end of the day or edge protection used where appropriate. Just about finished, guys. Thanks for your patience. Is there a risk of workers coming into contact with any overhead or underground services? Uh, not at the moment. I'm going to say nil. And finally, am I using correct manual handling, handling techniques? So I'm going to say yes to all workers discussed in the side induction. Um, the reason why I probably spent a little bit of time on this is because um, when I started building, I, I reckon I sort of fumbled my way through it. I got my builder's license at about like 23 or 24 or something. And I really, I didn't really have a mentor. I felt that I really fumbled my way through and just sort of figured things out through mistakes. I, I, I learned from a, um, an older chap Oh, geez, this would have been 15, 20 or whatever years ago. And um, he used to use checklists all the time. And this is before, this is well before um, the internet and having smartphones. He used to have checklists all the time. He used to document everything. Uh, and he used to make notes on his drawings all the time. He used to have a, um, up on his office, he used to have a whiteboard and he used to have it um, mapped out monthly so he would have a full program that he'd work on and he'd have a monthly program up on the whiteboard and he would be on top of it all he was probably one of the best builders i've ever come across just because he was so well planned and organized he was on top of everything these checklists he would often say to me these checklists even though they're for safety and people get cranky with them they're like a prompt and you go oh yeah i better get that for example, I'm going to say um, a safe work method statement is required. Say if you're doing uh, frames and trusses, you're looking at the risk assessment, you're looking at the safe work method statement, you're going to say, oh, gee, before these guys start this job, I need to get some scaffold around the back because there's a big drop. Does that make sense? All right, I'll move on before I get everyone gets too bored. Okay, so the next part of the risk assessment is actually um, – completing any hazards identified. Uh, I'll go back. It's mentioned up here and you've added it in the table. So I've gone, well, some hazards that are high risk identified, we've had some excavation works. So the actions were taken with a site induction for all personnel and we discussed in the swims for plant and equipment. About a month later, we had some erecting, erecting of frames and trusses. The crane to be used, a subcontractor is not allowed to be permitted to complete activity without the crane or edge protection. So as a foreman, you're like two or three weeks ahead. You've already thought about that. You've organized the crane. You've got the scaffold. It's all ready to go. Okay. 
working at Heights, we've got the bricklayers to use appropriate scaffolding systems. That's another month later. And then we've just made a note that's for the site foreman. He, he, he's to organise it and to monitor, monitor it. Does that help, everyone? All right, I'm going to go on to the assessment, and um, this is uh, the night where I want you to spend some time in getting as much of this housing and issue site safety pack complete. We still were going to go for the next, what have we got, Thursday, and then we've still got four lessons that I'm going to be going through quite a bit, but this is like a real opportunity to get on top of it and have a real understanding because also I'm going to want you to go through and do your um, inspection and do a report. And then also at the end of next week is going to be a knowledge assessment quiz, which I'll need to go through. So there's a lot, lot to do. So this is like a real opportunity to get this done. Okay. All right. I'll just go back. Sorry. I'm going to open this up. Please go to your WHS skills assessment. I'm going to open it up as a student. I'll see if I can just increase the size. Of that. Yeah, that's a bit better. Ooh. Okay. We've sort of a baptism by fire. We've gone through the easy parts of it. So you should have or hopefully have completed the first three forms. That's really easy. Just to have an understanding in that. Now, tonight, I want you to do this straight away, is complete a site-specific risk assessment for a job that you're either on or the drawings that we've sent. Can you see where it says here, ensure at least four hazards are identified? So on that document, I'll just go back. Just so this is really, really clear and everyone understands. I've only got three. Can you see that I've only got three? For this assessment, you're required to do four. And obviously, you're not permitted to do those ones. Oh, just go back. Okay. Thursday night, I'm going to go through completing a safe work method statement. I've sort of got a feeling, I'm guessing 99, 95% of you boys and girls understand how to do it. So I have had some messages of some students already getting into it. That's fine. Just make sure you actually read it clearly. This is why I'm going through this slow. I'll highlight this again. So for your safe work method statement, Ensure your high-risk work is identified. Specific job description identified and documented. Ensure at least six tasks are documented. Alrighty. Uh, I can't remember if it's on Thursday or Monday night. We're doing a record of on-site toolbox, but I'm going to go through this now because you've got the opportunity to get some of this done. It's like a fictitious toolbox. You just highlight that again. We want you to document a scenario on site that you have been a part of or one that you under, understand. Discuss how you have negotiated conflicting views and how you resolved any conflicts. Alrighty, that's going to be spoken about in more depth. Uh, on Thursday. And then there's some easy ones that we need you to do. An employee training register. I think we do that. We talk about trainee consultation, communication stuff on Monday night. We want you to document at least three entries. So if you complete two, we're going to have to send it back. It's just a requirement of the assessment. Electrical test and tag register. We go through that on Monday and Tuesday next week. We want six entries. Some of you may have already done it. Some of you might think this is easy. A hazardous chemical register. 
allow six entries at least with your links to your SDS. It used to be a MSDS, but it's now just called a SDS, Safety Data Sheet. I think that's Monday or Tuesday we're going to talk about that. And then finally, an incident and injury report. We do that next Thursday or the following week. Allow an incident you may recall and complete this part. Look, there's been some students that have written some and it's been quite funny, which is fine. You know, one guy said he chopped his arm off. It's something that we hope never happens, but there was like just you filling out the form shows that you have an understanding for the management plan. All right, let me just open that up first before I get on to the second part. Oh, actually, what I might do is as well, make sure that you don't click on it and open it up within the web. Make sure you download it. So see those three dots for more options? So click on that. Make sure you download it. You need to download it as a PDF. And I know Trevor's been assisting everyone to do that. So I'm going to open that up now. And see how we're doing the step-by-step -step process. We do that when we're going to start doing finances as well. We do it with building. So every week and every night, we sort of help you answer the assessments and have an understanding. And then you'll walk away, hopefully, with a bit of knowledge on how to be a builder. All right. So you've all done one, two, and three. We've discussed consultation. We've, we've gone through risk management hazards versus risk and risk management process. We're going to be talking about all these items pretty much till about there, I think it is off memory, or about electrical, on um, Thursday and Monday. The rest of that will be on um, the Tuesday and Thursday. So it's pretty much just going through the management plan. What I would like you to do is complete form number four. I clicked on that one, it didn't come up. Anyway, that's all right. Some of you may be on top of it, which is excellent, but just doing this nice and slow so we can get, get started on it and go on the right path. So at risk assessment, write down the project that you want. I want you to start thinking about it. Think about all of these items here. This is something I want you to do tonight. And complete that. Then also, what is that four hazards identified for that project? It'd be quite interesting to read some. All righty. All right, I'm just going to go back. I'm just going to minimize that so I don't lose my screen. All righty. Okay. Now I want you to stop now and have a bit of a think about um, the inspection of areas of risk. So I want you to stop and think about this for the weekend. Uh, we'd like you to get that done on the weekend. Some of you may have already done it. Some of you might have done it on site. I want you to stop and have a good think. I'm going to open this up a bit bigger so you can read it. I know I've mentioned it twice now, but um, I just want to make sure you get it right so it'll save everyone a bit of time. So does everyone now understand risks and hazards or hazards and risks? What you're going to do is you're going to complete a video or photographic inspection. Apologies, I've just said this before, but I'm going to keep going. I sound like a broken record. Based on observations of a current building site, which identifies one or more specified hazards, students must seek on-site permission or use a simulated workplace as per the direction. What we want you to do is completed the follow inspection of a hazard or hazards on site, addressed, discussed the risk and implemented control measures to provide safety on site. I want you also to provide some documentation that is relevant to what you've uh, implemented. <coughs> Think about it. All you need to do is note a code of practice. It could be a code of practice for asbestos removal. Uh, it could be a code of practice for working at heights. Uh, it could be a code of practice for demolition work. I want you to uh, 
note at least one document. Uh, I reckon I, I strongly recommend the three minute video. But if you don't want to, a photo evidence is enough. And we're saying probably about 12, 10 to 12 photos if you do. We, we don't get as many of those anymore. Alrighty. Right, I haven't really gone through this as much, but I'm going to bring it up. Once that's done, we want you to report on areas of specific risk. You are required to complete a report on the specific risk in accordance with best practice and statutory, statutory obligations. So statutory obligations are your obligations as a PCBU. Inspection reporting documentation may include, you can add these, safety procedure, checklist forms or hazard sheets as per the legislation. I'm just going to scroll down. I won't highlight that anymore. Inspection recorded within the report. I'm going to bring this document up and then I'm going to hand it over for you to get cracking. 6.30, the activity should come up. Probably going to take you about 20 minutes or so to complete that. Inspection recorded within the report. Hazards, risks identified. Control measures implemented. So you're just writing about what you've discovered. Evidence of relevant parties are consulted. That's a good point. I haven't probably discussed too much. Have you spoke to the workers and told them about this hazard on site? Recommendations are recorded. Control measures have been consulted with workplace personnel and evidence shown. Once that's done, or oh, sorry, uh, download. Oh, I'm going to go back. Sorry, boys and girls. I want you to download that there, put your name on it, and start filling that in. All righty. The reason why I've done this is to make it easier for everyone to complete. If you have a link for your video, put it in there or a file, whatever it is, and then 2.2, refer to the red uh, bold type. That sort of helps you out answering the questions a bit better. All right. Do we have any questions? I've noticed there's a student sitting in WHS1. Anyway. Um, I'm going to open it up. 6.30, the um, activity pops up. And I'm just going to open it up for any questions. And I'm going to open it up for um, the sections, the other sections. You boys and girls got any questions? I have some. In. Oh, no, that's wrong. I think you can talk now, boys and girls, if you wish. Trev, Toby, Paul, Mick, Team Griffith, anyone got any questions? This is great. I'm, I'm going to put, I'm going to go to Bali and teach from Bali, I reckon. If I'm not having students come to Wollongong, I'm going to go, I'm going to go live in Bali and start teaching from there. What do you reckon? <laughs> Good, mate. I don't think you'll be going there at the moment, but uh, no, no. students had a couple of questions on if they should use the Mr. and Mrs. Brown plans for the assignment, but um, they use the Mr. and Mrs. Brown plans for the WHS report, but for this specific risk assignment, they need to go out and find a site. Correct. That is correct. Uh, you don't have to use the Mr. and Mrs. Brown. I, I just like introducing that because those are the sets of drawings that we're going to be working through for the entire year. So we're going to be looking at them. I'm going to be giving those out to you. So all the sections, all the teachers are going to say, we're the client, we're going to get you to measure it. So this is where we're going to get you to start familiarising yourself with those drawings and follow the path as a builder. And the students are still muted, I believe. Oh, my God. Rookie era. Um, so if you want to have a chat, just put your hand up and then Brett will give you, will call you in turn. Sorry, boys and girls, I've just um, unmuted. Happy for you to jump in. We'll go for another 10 minutes and then I'll turn the recording off and I'm going to sit here and answer a heap of questions. Please be mindful too, this is a real opportunity to get as much work done as you can because Thursday is going to be, there's going to be some long lessons coming.
Hey, Brett. Hello. Um, with the WH Max. Um, Hello, Max. skills assessment, are we allowed to use a, um, for the site safety pack, sorry, are we allowed to use a site that we've been on like maybe a year ago that you remember pretty well, which is more suited to some of the... Yes, uh, if you can on? think about it and document it, that is, I'm more than happy with that. That's fine. Right. I just don't remember the address, but can I make one up? We like it that oh, you, I bet you you can figure it out. Uh, yeah. Busy. Um, Van just be mindful, Max. Well. Yeah, sorry, Trevor. Oh, Van Dam's got his hand up. Sorry. Shane. Hello, mate. Good. How you doing? Good, mate. How are you? Fantastic. Look, I've uh, added a skills assessment task to the to my work. Yes. I just want to update it, but I can't delete the original one. So can you copy? Can you um, download a copy? Uh, yeah, I've got a copy. I've got all that sorted out. It's, it's on my file, but I'm just, I just want to delete the one I've already posted because I've just updated something that I've missed. Uh, all right. that this is probably explained. a good opportunity. Okay, what I'm going to do is, and this is for all the teachers and all the boys and girls out in... Um, connected delivery world can you see these little breakout rooms right these are where if you go boys and girls have got some individual questions we'll go in and i'll do this after i'll do this with shane just so you get a feel for it i'll click on there right and then i go in here and i go meet yeah i'll click on that and then that's where we can come in and, we'll, and then i can do some one-on-one -on -one with you yeah, Is cool. that all right, boys and girls? Yeah. So once we're finished and I'll turn the recording off, if anyone wants some one-on-one, -on -one, that's where we'll start doing it. And that's inclusive for um, like all the other teachers as well, which they know about, but just so your students know. I just saw with you in the skills assessment, when I was reading through it, um, I thought that it was giving examples, but you've actually um, written in there uh, different. Well, I'm just trying to track it up now. Bear with me for a tick. That's all right. Um, so in the work health and safety form number four, site-specific risk assessment, items to consider, you've actually filled in each one of them, 9, 10, 11, 12 boxes. But I just went straight down to the actual hazards and just filled a whole bunch of the hazards straight into the boxes underneath it. But um, I'm just trying to update it. So I'll get onto it. You're right. Are you okay with that? I, I I can't say I've filled it in. It's it's just the document that you fill in yourself. Does that yeah, help? Yeah, yeah. In your example, but you wrote like, can parking arrangements at the site cause injury? Oh, okay. Wrote, that yes, is solely it and then, correct. That is yeah. solely just an example for a risk assessment. Obviously, you can't use that. That's just so everyone gets a bit of a feel for it. Yeah. Right. Okay. No worries. I'm sorted now. Cheers, bro. Sweet. Sweet. Thank you. No dramas. Any other questions? Yeah, Brett. Um, if we use, I'm not sure what some of the other boys use. Sorry, Max. How you doing, bud? Good, man. Um, I'm using Adobe Reader, obviously for the PDF for the house industry pack thing. Like, I'm using that to fill it out. Um, when I get down to the, I was just working on the swims one. Oh, sorry, the hazardous chemicals register, where it um, says product labelled and safety data sheet available, and you go to flick them from obviously yes to no. As soon as you flick it to no, like it just changes back to yes. Right, okay. That might be a fault in the PDF file. Mate, just make a note of it. That's not going to be an issue for us marking. That's nothing, but that's just a tech issue. All right. Um, worst case... Grab us later on tonight and we'll jump in the breakout room and help you. Yep. And I'll just even have a look and I can and I can explain it. Or one of the other guys can jump in. Hey, Brett, just on that one as well. Yeah, yeah, go for it, Shane. Um, I used – so I exactly the same problem when I was clicking on it. It would take the little arrow away. Right. Um, there's an option there where you can click onto a tool which allows you to circle it, which I did, instead of – Clicking it, like putting have, you got, have you got your like screen now? Around the box. Have you got uh, your screen now? Can I can I get you to present to everyone? Are you alright with that? Uh, I'm not sure how to do it at this stage. What do I, what do I go to? Request. Uh, 
we'll on the right it. top right hand side. If I'm going to show you my screen. You don't have to, mate. There's no obligation to have to. Um, maybe um, we can do it on Thursday. But if you want to share, I'll unshare. I'll make you a presenter, and I can get you to share your screen so everyone can see it. But we don't have to do that tonight. There's no pressure. Um, just bear with me for a tick. See that? I'll try and pull up what I've got. It's good to get to understand how the software works because it's it's pretty good once everyone gets a feel for a week and to be doing one on one stuff. You know what I'll do? Let's, yeah, let's I'll just let everyone get, Yeah, we'll that's okay, mate. Yeah, we'll get, we'll let everyone get cracking. And um, I'll keep answering questions, but what I'm going to do is if anyone wants to go into these breakout rooms, I want them to really get a crack on it um, tonight. All right, is everyone okay that I stopped the recording? Yep. All right, I'm going to stop the recording and um, turn off my screen, and I'm going to answer as much one-on-one -on -one stuff as we can you've got all the teachers and actually where's gary gary's still there dude i'm still here yeah I'm Gaz still is there. Here. if anyone's got any questions you can hassle him as well baptism by fire guys it sounds like <laughs> it <clears throat> so which rooms are we sending everyone